Could we imagine a future where we can go for a run with no smog every single day? Can we imagine a future where there's no red air quality alerts that are causing flare-ups with children who have asthma or adults that are vulnerable to poor air quality? Right now, the best options are to marry renewable energy generation with the fuels that we're using for zero emission vehicles. And in the case of hydrogen, that could be similarly energy that is generated by renewables to produce green hydrogen. That is a great way to approach the challenge. My name is Erica Myers, and I'm the Global Director for E-Mobility at the World Resources Institute. Transportation is at the heart of everything, so to find viable solutions very quickly is paramount. Arcola Energy is a hydrogen and fuel cell specialist focused on heavy duty vehicles. So bringing together hydrogen and fuel cell technologies to decarbonize and take the emissions out of heavy transport. I'm Ben Todd, the CEO and founder of Arcola Energy. So we're here in Bowness with this Scottish Hydrogen Train project. What's happening here at the moment is a four million mile, 40 year old train is being stripped of its historic drive, ready for a new hydrogen fuel cell power system based on the A-Drive platform to be installed. The train will then run around the railway here, fueled with green hydrogen from a refueling station that's been created just across the way. Our focus is on heavy duty and in particular public municipal fleets. The reason for this is that in the early stage of the transition to zero emission mobility, we're looking for places where we can deploy vehicles that have a very heavy duty cycle. Climate change and government policy means that we have to transition our entire transport infrastructure. But in the early stages of the market, we need to focus on vehicle classes where we can create a self-contained, financially sustainable and quick to deploy solution. Hydrogen is a fantastic fuel for certain on-road or off-road applications. We think it's going to be a great option for heavy-duty transportation. So for example, the semi-tractor trailers, boats, ferries, trains, all these big heavy modes of transportation that are going to be very difficult for electric to fuel. So hydrogen could be a great option for those modes. We're in the process of converting a refuse collection vehicle from diesel to hydrogen fuel cell. It's halfway through having the diesel engine removed, hydrogen tanks, fuel cell, battery and electric motors installed for demonstration at the COP26 climate change conference and then to go into service with Glasgow City Council next year. My name is Simon Melius, I'm the Engineering Director at Arcola Energy. Heavy duty vehicles are a great target for hydrogen fuel cell technology because they need a very, very high amount of stored energy. If you put on a battery system big enough to power a refuse collection vehicle through its whole shift or a bus that's working really hard doing 18 hour shifts, you need such heavy batteries that the vehicle payload is compromised. So they're on the road a lot. Ideally, it's a back to base operation. So one filling station can support a large number of vehicles. Underneath the cab, we have the fuel cell module which is hybridized with two traction batteries between the chassis rails. So the power from the fuel cell and the battery is driving the traction motor, which turns the prop shaft to drive the rear wheels. The scale and speed of the transition for sustainable transportation is far too slow. We need it to accelerate by anywhere from 16 to 32 X in order to meet our 1.5 degree Celsius targets for global warming. Policy is critical for accelerating a sustainable transportation future. If the governments are saying we need to invest in hydrogen, that is a really, really critical signal for startups, existing businesses, people who manufacture those things that the government is encouraging. And the more we can scale up and ramp up that capacity and the production of those devices, the cheaper it becomes and then we can quickly flip the economics. Local authorities play a really critical role in the transition to zero emission vehicles. They'll have a strong influence on the emission control policies within cities. When it comes to private corporation decisions, I believe in change agents. 
individuals within the company that are encouraging their leadership to make a certain decision that benefits not just their company, but the planet. We've spent over 100 years now optimizing our use of diesel and petrol. So the cost is very low, it's powerful, it's effective, and now we need to replace it. So any new technology we bring in to replace diesel has a really high bar for performance that's been set. So we want all of the benefits of this brilliantly optimized but dirty technology delivered at the same price, at the same convenience, but zero emission. We've got a real challenge to meet, but we also have a really amazing opportunity. I do have hope that we can make the argument to the decision makers and the leaders of our planet that this is the most important issue that they can work on today. They want to have a legacy. Sustainable transportation is one of those things that they can do to have a legacy. Thank you.